Today, we're taking a look at the newly refreshed 2024 model of one of MSI's most popular and powerful gaming laptops, the Raider GE78HX 14 VIG. We'll talk specs and features, run some benchmarks, demo some gameplay, and find out if the new GE78HX with its hefty price tag is worth the money and if it should be on your list. Quick disclaimer, MSI did send me this laptop to review, but is not paying me for this review. I don't get to keep it. Just know there's no bias here, only my actual honest opinion. That said, if you find this video helpful and want to support a smaller channel, consider not only hitting that subscribe button and notification bell, but using my links in the description, which help me earn a small commission so I can afford to make more content like this. The 2024 MSI Raider GE78HX14 VIG is loaded with a 14th Gen i9 14900HX processor, 64 gigabytes of 5600 MHz DDR5 RAM, 2 terabytes of SSD storage, and an RTX 4090 GPU, and currently retails for $3,799. This is a monster of a machine, and whether you're a gamer looking to run the latest games or a content creator who needs a lot of raw power, this machine will get it done. Looking at build quality, it's clearly meant to be a stationary gaming laptop as it is a tank of a unit, but it is a well-built tank and everything from the metal body parts to the sturdy hinges feels premium, unlike some laptops I've owned in the past that had more of a plastic and fragile build. The entire laptop weighs a little over a hefty 6.5 pounds, sits about 15 inches wide, with a depth just under 12 inches, and a height when closed of about one and a quarter inch. The screen stands 12 inches tall when opened, and when you factor in the big bulky charger that's included, it's not exactly what you'd want to take with you if you travel a lot and plan to use it for things like editing photography on the go. But like I said, this is intended for the serious gamer, especially one who may not have the room for a desktop. Now let's run through these specs and features, then put it through its paces. Looking at the connections on the left side of the laptop, we have an audio line out combo jack an SD card reader, and a Thunderbolt 4 port. On the right side, you'll find a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A port, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C slash display port with power delivery charging for your devices. It even fast charges my S22 Ultra. On the back from left to right, you'll find an RJ45 Ethernet port, an HDMI 2.1 connection, a Kensington lock, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C slash display port, and finally, your DC power connector. As far as RGB, you've got the RGB matrix light bar running along the front, which can be customized inside the SteelSeries app and is probably one of the most defining features of an MSI Raider laptop. You then have the SteelSeries tactile keyboard, also with color customization that can be matched to the light bar, has highlighted WASD caps, and what MSI calls anti-ghosting technology, which keeps keystrokes from having lag. And then we've got the MSI logo on the back of the screen. The mouse pad is about 5 inches wide by 3 inches and is pretty responsive. It'll be great for everyday use, but of course, when it comes to gaming, you'll want to use a dedicated mouse or an external controller altogether. It's built with MSI's Cooler Boost 5 technology, which has two intake fans to bring in cooler air, while six exhaust pipes blow out hot air, all which is built around the CPU and GPU for a shared design that helps keep both parts cool. I will test fan noise and see what kind of temps we get in a bit. As an audio guy who's worked in home studio environments for years, one thing I am impressed by is the six speaker surround sound system by Dyn Audio that's built into the frame. Now don't expect any real bass response here even when you turn it up with the equalizer, but the Nahemic, is that how you say it? Nemic, Namic, Namic. Maybe it's got something to do with Piccolo. App made by SteelSeries has some great customization to work with. Serious audio files will connect to a third party speaker system or headphones, but on the go, it sounds good. Now that brings us to the most important part of the unit, the display. It's equipped with a 17-inch QHD Plus or 2560x1600P IPS panel with a 240Hz refresh rate. It is an anti-glare matte display, which makes sense for an IPS, with a 16x10 ratio and an advertised 100% DCI-P3. No touchscreen here, which I'm fine with anyway because my oily skin would just leave fingerprints all over. 
Well, a few things from the website. It does come with Windows 11 installed, is Wi-Fi 7 ready, uses Bluetooth 5.4, and has the option to switch from discrete graphics mode to MS hybrid graphics mode for better gaming performance. It's got MSI AI built in, which auto adjusts the hardware to get the best performance. So whether it's using the webcam, gaming, or editing content, it should keep the laptop at peak performance. The same goes for MSI's Overboost Ultra technology, which will max out the CPU and GPU when performance is needed. With all that out the way, let's put it through a few tests and see how it performs. Okay, so this is the microphone slash webcam test. It is a 1080p full high definition webcam, and if I take a look at myself, I don't know, I feel like I'm pretty pixelated. Let me kind of move out the way here. I think the background actually looks a lot better than I do, which since I'm the focal point, I think I should be the most crisp and clear thing on the screen. As you can see, I have this window open. The rest of them are closed with my home theater curtains. I have a glass sliding door to my right, which is about halfway open, and then kitchen lights right above me, which gives me some good lighting. I think this is probably the ideal or the typical lighting situation for most people who are at home. Um, Again, I don't know, I just think it's too pixelated, I'm too pixelated, and if you're somebody that's going to be doing Zoom meetings pretty often, you might be better off just getting a third-party camera for better quality. I'm not sure how the microphone sounds, so you let me know, does the microphone get the passing grade? When it comes to backlight bleed, because it's an IPS display, you will get a little bit of glow along the edges. This unit is most noticeable in the upper right and bottom left corner, which are more visible the more I raise my camera's ISO, but it really isn't something you'd notice when gaming. I booted up Halo Infinite to its main menu to see how loud the fans would get and what kind of temperatures it would hit after 30 minutes of usage. And after 30 minutes, the GPU temperature remained at a steady 74 degrees, while the CPU averaged around 80 degrees, never going over 84. Now, Halo Infinite doesn't have the option for DLSS, but I averaged an FPS as low as 115 with a high around 134. I also ran benchmarks on Forza Horizon 5 and without DLSS achieved an FPS of 127. With DLSS turned on, I hit 184. In Cinebench R23, I got a score of 29,130 with multi-core performance, with a single core performance of 2,229. I also ran a few benchmarks with Blender, and these are the samples per minute results I got. When it comes to battery life, it comes with a 99.9 watt hour battery, so I fully charged it, then started playing Halo Infinite at 4 p.m. on the dot to see how long it would last without being charged. The battery reached 5% at 5.10pm, getting 1 hour and 10 minutes. 
Now, after spending a week with the GE78HX, I'd feel more than comfortable recommending it to you if gaming is your main thing. Now, if you're a photographer or editor on the go, I think for the $3,799 price tag, you could get a pretty maxed out MacBook Pro that would be much lighter and easier to travel with. It just depends if you'd also like to game. Now, if you want to stick with MSI, you may want to take a look at the new Creator Pro X18HX dropping soon. Now, keep in mind that with the almost four grand, you could build a really nice desktop PC. That's about what I paid to build mine, but you'd still need a monitor that could run you an extra grand and accessories. Plus, you'd lose out on being able to take it with you wherever you go. At the end of the day, the GE78HX is a solid beast of a machine that won't only tackle anything you throw at it, but will future-proof you for some time. Now, let me know your thoughts on the MSI Raider, and if you decide to buy, don't forget to use my links to support the channel. Now, that's going to wrap things up for today. I'll see you next time.